First, I would like to explain why we need significant figures. It has something to do with measurement and the manufacturer. When we talk about measurement, for instance, if we want to measure the width of an A4 paper and、um, We use a ruler, and we find out that it's really hard to determine the lumber because the edge of the width falls right in between 210 millimeter and 211 millimeter. So the traditional rule is that we always just estimate one digit. Therefore, if you measure it. Three times, or you have three people measure the same thing, you would have different numbers. Now, be aware that the very last digit is always uncertain. We are not sure of it, and we cannot have two digits that we are not sure of. We can only always estimate one digit. So those are the digits that we are not sure. If you plug in all those numbers into your, your calculator. And to get mean value, and this is what you're gonna get. We have a real trouble here. Should we just copy all the digits from your calculator? The answer is no. It is wrong to copy all the digits. But then, how many digits should we keep? How to use the number correctly? That is the topic of significant figures. Significant figures are the number of digits in a value, often a measurement that contribute to the degree of accuracy of the value, and it's. The rule that all engineers and the scientists should follow. Here is the rule of the number of significant figures. Non-zero digits are always significant. Final ending zeros written to the right of the decimal are significant. For example, 7.00 has three significant figures. Zeros written to the right of the decimal point for the purpose of spacing the decimal point are not significant. For instance, 0.073 has only two significant figures. Zeros written between significant figures are significant. So those are the rules of the number of significant figures. Now, question one: How many significant figures are the following numbers? So the solution: After we are able to tell the number of significant figures of each individual number, what if we need to cooperate different numbers? Just like when we measure the width of the A4 paper, we got three data and we want to get the mean value. How how should we operate with significant figures? Here are the rules. When you do much Multiplying and dividing. The number of significant figures is when multiplying and dividing. The number of significant figures in the final result is the same as the number of significant figures in the least average of the factors being combined. And when adding or subtracting, round the result to the smallest number of decimal places of any term in the sum. In in regard of rounding. If the last digit to be dropped is less than five, drop the digit. If the last digit dropped is greater than or equal to five, raise the last retained digit by one. Use scientific notation when applicable. Now let's look at A4 paper with measurement. We got three data and we know our unsure digit. And when we add them together, the least accurate decimal place is the Digit that's after decimal place. Therefore, we have 630.5 divided by three. Since three is not a measurement, there's no uncertainty in three. Therefore, the answer should be 210.2 mean. And here's a general equation for mean value. There's a difference between the mean value we get and the true value. It gives insight on accuracy. So it is the difference of the experiment data minus and true value. Divided by true value times 100%. Be careful that we put an absolute value for the A4 paper. We have 210.2 minus 210 divided by 210 times 100%. So we get 0.01% difference. That's the percent. Error. So what is error? Is it a blunder, reading a scale backwards, misunderstanding procedure, walloping lab mates measurements? The answer is no. Those are mistakes. Those should be avoided. Error is the uncertainty in measurements that nothing can be done about. For instance, if you want to measure radiation from the sun here. In Houston, you are meant to have some error because you cannot control the clouds in the sky. You cannot control the humidity in the air, right? So th 
there's nothing you can do about it with existing tools and the environment unless you go to the space so that's another story and usually there are two types of errors the first one is systematic errors large systematic errors can and must be eliminated small systematic errors will always be present example thermometer poor contact cloudy or shady when measure radiation from the sun. Another one is random errors. For instance, noise, imprecise definition. For instance, if you want to measure the height of me. So now, be careful about the height of me. It can be uncertain number because if you measure me in the morning, I'm a little bit taller than my height in the evening. So the definition of my height itself is imprecise. Therefore, when you do experiment, you are meant to have error. So let's come to the A4 paper with measurement again. I asked the two groups of students to take the measurement. And if you look at the, their data, they all have the same mean value, which means they have the same percent error. But if we look into details, all the data they took are different. So how do we know which group of data is better than the other? That has something to do with standard deviation gives insight on precision. It tells you how scattered all your data are. Its expression is the square root of the sum up of the difference between individual data and the mean value and the square of it divided by number of trials. So if one made one more measurement data x, then it would have some 68% probability of lying within the average value plus minus standard deviation. So for instance, our measurement. So here is the standard deviation of the A4 paper width, which is 0.2 millimeter. With respect of the significant figures. So throughout this entire semester, whatever measurement or whatever computation you're doing, you need to respect the rule of significant figures. Now we have learned how to get the mean value. What is the percent error? It's basically describing accuracy, how close to the true value. And we talked about standard deviation, which is talking about precision, how close all the data are. Here is the shoot the target again, and uh, it can tell you the concept of accuracy and the precision very clearly. So the first one is you shoot the target several times and the dots represents your score. And as you can see that, if you look at the center of all the dots, it is far away from the center of the target. Therefore, it is it has very low accuracy, low precision. And the second one is high accuracy but low precision because all your thoughts are scared. Now, if you look at the first one, how would you comment on average and the precision? So yeah, it is low accuracy, but high precision. And the very last one, high accuracy, high precision. Now, what if I want to measure the area of A4 paper? Then that could be challenging. That's something new. So we obviously need to make measurement of both width and height using what we already learned. So for the width, we already got all of them. The red number means calculation. And then we do the same thing for the height. We took three measurements, we found the mean value, and we got the standard deviation. Now, to calculate the area, all data should have two parts. So you should have average value, and you should have uncertainty which is standard deviation. So this is what we call the propagation of error. For instance, a volume V equals X times Y times Z, then the standard deviation of the volume would equal to the partial derivative of X and times standard deviation of X and square of it plus uh, so on and so forth. The standard deviation of volume really depends on the relationship of each individual quantity and the standard deviation of each individual quantity. For instance, our example, and then first we find out the area. We have width and height mean values, and they all have four significant figures. So our answer should have four significant figures. And then we calculate the standard deviation. We take partial derivatives of width and height and multiply corresponding standard deviation and square them. And then we find out the standard deviation of area. It's 1 times 10 to 2 millimeters square. Of course, if you have different format of equation, the rule of propagation of error is the same. So here is just a list of different examples. Squeeze 2. True or false? Two values with the same number of significant figures 
may have different uncertainties. When you use numbers that have uncertainties to compute other numbers, the computed numbers are also uncertain. Here are the answers. Now, how about a manufacturer uncertainty? Yeah, there you go. That's uh, my one of my favorite game, Jenga. And if you look at each individual block, even though you use the same machine to manufacture them, they are different. That is the uncertainty due to manufacture. And that's also what I called the beauty of imperfection. Thank you.